Welcome uh, to this session where I will uh, share my uh, or, or our experience um, in, in the road towards a more secure API um, landscape for the Colorado Group. So who am I? Um, my name is Tom Peters. I'm um, uh, working already more than 20 years in, uh, in security within Colorado Group. Um, I started uh, as an IT security officer. And uh, about nine years ago, I, um, I, I, I started as an uh, IT security architect with uh, main expertise and focus on uh, identity and access management, uh, authentication and uh, authorization. And uh, more recently, um, also in uh, cloud security. So um, Colored Group, what is Colored Group? Um, so, in, in, it all started with uh, with the bakery um, um, that was uh, um, yeah um, executed or by uh, Franz Kolreit. Um and in the um, in the thirties um, he started to delivering uh, first bread and later uh, other products to stores and uh, uh, and and bulk consumers. Um, and at the mid of, uh, of the 50s, uh, towards the end of the century, um, Colred was uh, has started a discount uh, concept, concept of stores that uh, guaranteed the lowest prices and, uh, and in order to achieve that uh, also uh, worked on their uh, lowest costs. Um, and then uh, by the end of the century, uh, all those formats were bundled in uh, Colred group um, uh, and that is where we are today. And basically, um, the activities where uh, Colred is active on is uh, still the majority is still on retail, so foods, non-food, uh, both in uh, in Belgium, uh, France, and uh, and Luxembourg, um, but also on wholesale and food service. And but there are quite some other uh, activities that uh, where Colred is active on. Uh, for example, production. Huh? So we have a cheese production. Uh, Colred has a wine bottling, a meat proce processing. Um, there is also uh, a printing, a document, and archive solution uh, within uh, within Cimeta. Um, there is a, a training aspect in Colred Group Academy. Um, Colored Group is active in exports, is active in energy, for example, DOTS24, is active in pharma, uh, with the new pharma, and uh, most recently, uh, Colored Group acquired uh, gyms as a, a fitness uh, chain. So quite a lot of, of different activities that are, uh, um, that are in play within, within Colored Group. So actually, you can say that the Colorado Group evaluated or, or evolved, sorry, uh, from a, from a family business uh, towards a family of of different businesses. And in order to support uh, that business, um, there is a BPNS, uh, which is uh, yeah um, responsible for um, the um, IT part, uh, not only on the systems but also on the on the processes. Uh, so indeed, as uh, as Wout, uh, Wout already mentioned, uh, this is a sequel on uh, on a previous session of a colleague of mine, so uh, Dries van Marke, um, who um, gave an, uh, an overview of the uh, API manage management journey that, uh, that we uh, went through as, uh, as an organization. So this was on that uh, API management uh, aspect, and uh, today we are in the access control uh, layer while well, it was already presented by Tris at the time. Um, so, okay, every road has a starting point. So, um, it's not, Colred is not that different uh, against, uh, yeah, um, yeah, against other uh, companies. We, we are exposing more and more uh, information and business assets uh, through, uh, through APIs. Um, and, um, we, uh, for that reason, we, we started thinking that um, yeah, controlling access uh, to be to these APIs is is really is really uh, key here uh, because uh, the amount is is only going to grow. Um, so that's that's important where uh, where we want to focus to the API security to prevent indeed yeah, the business and the and the reputation loss and and to avoid yeah possible competitor gains that uh, that can. Uh, 
can flow through these uh, the information that are exposed to the APIs. Um, so we wanted to control not only on, on API level, eh, so uh, but but uh, more specifically also on on a functionality level. So which which methods could be could be called uh, through uh, through those APIs, and and not only that, but we also wanted to to facilitate the the role level security based on on the end user that uh, that has initiated through a client applications uh, to through client application these API calls. Um, but what we saw is when we started the project is that, um, yeah, um, also there was a technology shift uh, that, that, that took place at a certain moment. So you can see here, like, uh, we, we shifted from, from uh, uh, Java, uh, Java faces, uh, uh, Java server faces to a more angular and, and, and more mobile uh, uh, front-end uh, technology implementation. Um, for um, yeah, services exposure, um, we uh, we shifted from yeah SOAP towards Rust. So that that was something yeah to take into account in in, in our approach. Uh, yeah. So if you look at the at the um, the three groups that that were already explained by Peter, uh, we evaluated yeah two of uh, we evaluated that two of the three groups um, were already covered. Um, quite well in our landscape, and that was due to the uh, to the API management project uh, that that already covered uh, quite a lot of these uh, these aspects. So, um, for the traffic management aspects, that was mainly covered by uh, network and uh, and the API gateway that was introduced. And if you look at the uh, at the information aspect. Then it's rather the, uh, the the clever design, the guidance framework, and and the governance processes uh, that uh, that were covered in that API management aspect. So we we decided to uh, to concentrate really on the uh, authentication and, and authorization aspects uh, here. Uh, this resulted into um, yeah two two main work streams or two uh, yeah quite big projects. Um, so the first one was uh, web source security uh, that was uh, going on, on exposing and, and, and consuming uh, the, uh, the, web, the secured web services. And another one was the company authentication, which is really um, yeah, making a shift towards modern authentication uh, including multi-factor authentication within the company and also providing the access control uh, towards a secured uh, front-end application. And uh, of course, in this session, we are going to, uh, um, to focus on the, on the web, web server security part. So in our approach of defining the right security, uh, so that's indeed more than just saying we will implement OR2. Um, it is it is finding indeed the characteristic uh, like uh, Peter already explained. Um, but so we we as as a colored group we um, we used the the typical uh, CIA triad in order to to see okay what what kind of security do we want to to implement here. Um, so the CIA uh, CIA triad with uh, focus on confidentiality and integrity because the availability aspect was already uh, related in the in the traffic management uh, so um, yes confidentiality and integrity and based on that we uh, we defined our our requirements um, um, and these sorry these requirements uh, they uh, they could go from a simple identification being no security versus full blown security with authentication and authorization. This resulted in uh, in two security levels. So we have the security level zero, where we implement the identification, so not the uh, the security aspect, so no authentication, no authorization. And this is based on uh, using an API key, an API key that will be used inside of an API gateway to identify a client, um, basically to, um, 
um, to see, okay, uh, yeah, what what is the the, the, the consumers, uh, the consumer of of a service behavior, and and also to perform monitoring and logging uh, on on that uh, on that level. Then um, on security, when security comes at play, uh, de de depending on indeed the confidentiality and integrity aspects. Um, we uh, wanted to implement uh, the, the authentication and authorization based on uh, on the industry standard 2.0. Um, so, uh, and that is uh, all about yeah, checking not only on the API gateway, uh, but also checking on the API itself. Uh, we'll come to that in the next slide. So, we will focus on the implementation of the industry standards 2.0. So the approach that we took there is to implement a layered security funnel. Um, so for every client that wants to connect to the data through the through the API, we um, we foresaw the or, or we uh, uh, looked at it in, in 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 three different layers layers. So the first one is the session validation, which means like. Yeah, on a, on a network firewall, on on a, and and on the web application firewall, we we validate uh, the session. Um, on on a, a, then the the second level is the coarse grained um, authorization that we want to implement, and 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 moreover the the validation of the the coarse grained uh, authorization here, and that is being performed on the API gateway. While uh, the last part is the fine-grained security, so the role level security, and that is being performed at the A API. So these are the three different layers that that uh, a call needs to to go through uh, in order to uh, to connect to the to uh, to fetch the data uh, that is protected here. Um, but as as a matter of of just um, yeah, uh, displaying or, or, or showing you that it was not only on auth authentication authorization level that we that we focus, but yeah, indeed, like Peter already explained on the different layers, uh, we, we added the other components like traffic management and uh, and, and information management. Uh, so the, the application firewall is is included in the application delivery controller con controller that we have here, but, but where we also implement additional vulnerability scanning that is typical in a in a web environment. We do in and output filtering, uh, we do throttling at, and and so on. And then on a more uh, granular level, uh, so then it's on API gateway. So that's so where the ADC is more on HTTP level, the API gateway is more on the service level. And then at last, uh, we have uh, the API level, which is in, in indeed yeah the, the really detailed level. So that was the delayed security funnel. Um, yeah, indeed. As I already said, like it's it's not only taking the OA2 uh, standard and, and just implementing it. There are a lot of open uh, open things in uh, in 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 the uh, yeah in, in, in the spec. No? So there, there are things that that you still need to to decide upon. So um, in in our case, we uh, we had some uh, more than thirty architectural decisions to take. Of which I will uh, will present uh, a few here. Eh? So, um, so this is a little bit yeah the overview that we have. Eh? So you have the client, you have the SDS infrastructure, which is basically our authorization server. Um, we have the API gateway, and we have, and in fact, the API implementation here. So what are what are by example the uh, the decisions we uh, we had to take there. First of all, the product selection. Huh? So that's maybe an obvious one, but of course, yeah, you, you have to evaluate whether yeah, you, you will do a reuse or, or you will go for another product uh, because there are some, uh, some aspects lacking. Or, uh, so we decided uh, for the STS infrastructure and for the uh, API gateway to uh, go with uh, the existing uh, infrastructure that we have. So in fact, doing, doing a, a reuse of, uh, of um, yeah, our, uh, our existing product, which is uh, uh, on API Gateway, that Software AG, uh, pro product of Software AG, and um, for um, STS uh, infrastructure or uh, authorization server, that's a product of IBM, the uh, ISAM, um, IBM uh, Security um, Access Manager. 
Next thing where we needed to make some decisions on is on the end user identity access management. Um, maybe already good here to, to mention is like um, the uh, what was not in scope of our product was the consent. Uh, consent was out of scope. Uh, but of course, since we are implementing OAT 2.0, that can be fairly easily uh, implemented here. Um, but we focused on the information that uh, where, where Colored Group was, was the owner of. Eh? So Colored Group has to decide who gets access and, and it will not be the end user who will decide who gets access. So that, that was our main focus point here. So as what concerns the, the management aspect, we needed to cover it uh, yeah, cross-platform. And what I mean by cross-platform is that, yeah, we have the Java APIs, uh, but we also have mainframe APIs that we needed to cover there. Um, we have the packages that, that, that is also an aspect that, that we need to take along. And not only the management aspect, but also the runtime. Eh? So questions like, okay, when will we do a recalculation of, of um, the accesses uh, an, an end user has, for example, eh? because yeah, we can manage it here over here. But but when when there is a call, it's coming to the uh, to the authorization server. When do we go checking? Okay, for that end user, that access is uh, is is uh, is granted, and that access is not granted. When will we just do that check here? Uh, we decided uh, within our company to do a recalculation of the access rights uh, when uh, refresh tokens are being used. Yeah? So that's that's typically the thing that we that we decided there. Um, okay, uh, another aspect that that we um, needed to take into account is the authentication methods. Okay, this has a direct link to the authentication product project, which I uh, mentioned previously. Uh, but also we thought about, okay, don't we need any step up? Eh? Um, so that that part is, is um, yeah, it shifted to another to another phase, eh? but that, that's also an aspect. Eh? So can be that your client is at a certain, yeah, um, um, confidentiality and integrity level, but your API might be on a higher level. Eh? So that's, that's also something to take along here. Um, the next uh, aspect is uh, is the token. Uh, so quite a lot of quite a lot of um, decisions have to be taken on the token because that's a crucial element in your in your whole architecture. For example, yeah, the type uh, you can see here before the API gateway, we only use opaque tokens. Um, we um, and and after the API gateway, we use the by value tokens. So wh why is that? Why do we choose here for the for the opaque token? Well, two reasons for that. One is uh, that we don't want the client to to misuse or to abuse information that's inside of the token because that's not meant to be in an OAuth two scenario. Eh? So so an, an access token and eh? that's in this case is opaque. Uh, yeah, it should not be used by clients. Well, it can can be used by by means uh, by sending it along to get your information, but it's not to be inspected by the client. So that's one thing why we wanted to avoid this. Another thing is that we want to really uh, avoid uh, the leakage of potential uh, confidential security information on the token. So that's why we used or we use an opaque token. Um, another uh, decision point is what yeah is the token whether it be a holder of key token or a bearer token. So we chose for a bearer token on the format. Eh? We needed to decide on the format because in the OAuth two spec it is left open. You can choose whatever you want. Uh, we chose for a JWT token. Lifetime also an important aspect. Um, so yeah, definitely. And and another aspect is the granular the, the granularity. And so, so towards your audience. So, do we use one token for all APIs, or or will we just use one token per API? And and also, yeah, the the range between them. And so, um, within Colorad, we have chosen for one token per API. Main reason for that is that we want to avoid uh, token bloat. And so, the the amount of information that can be stored within a token is limited well it's not that limited but anyhow there are limits on uh, to it and if you say okay one token for all apis all well, it 
can 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 have a big impact. Eh? So, and, and another an, an important aspect is security wise is we want to limit the impact when a bearer token gets stolen. If it if it does, that then the impact is is limited. So that's why we've chosen for one token per API. And then uh, aspects like uh, content. Uh, so what where do we put the claims in? So we uh, we use the scopes in there. Uh, okay. Another aspect is uh, remote introspection. So remote introspection, when an, uh, a call is being made from the client over an API gateway, uh, which uh, always need to go over API gateway, uh, we do as a boundary component, we, uh, we introspect um, the, uh, the token towards the authorization server. So that means that we explicitly go to the authorization server to verify whether yeah, the token is still valid um, and, and, and also uh, that it has not been revoked, for example. Eh? So that, that, that's the main, the main uh, component here. Um, yeah, another decision is the token translation. So the translation not only between opaque towards uh, a, a bearer token, uh, the JO token, um, but it can also API gateway uh, works as a kind of mediator uh, for uh, migration scenarios. For example, if your backend API is still not capable of implementing OR2 or, or can only implement it uh, partially, then API Gateway can, can handle or can work as a mediator to convert maybe uh, the front end, which is uh, OR2, uh, and the back end, which is something else. For example, another token can be a token or can be something else. So that's the token translation aspect. That's uh, that's important here. Uh, and then a uh, last example I want to I want to give here is uh, the local introspection. So uh, security doesn't stop at the at the API gateway at the boundary. It is also being implemented on the API itself, which uh, means like uh, okay, on the API itself we don't go explicitly do to the uh, to the authorization server, no, we keep it locally, which means like, okay, we since it's a bearer token that we have here, it's signed, we can validate the signature, we can validate the issue, we can validate the expiry, we can validate, um, yeah, uh, uh, the audience, eh? and audience also very important here. So, uh, yeah, so just a grasp uh, out of the, yeah, uh, number of, of decisions we, uh, we had to take here. Uh, and it doesn't stop with uh, with the architectural decision, even even on a, on a lower uh, level. Uh, the design on the design level, we we had to take as well uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of decisions there. Um, uh, this uh, the implementation it it works well. It has a perfect fit for the uh, application services. Of course, yeah, there are exceptions. Eh? So the the not one uh, one size fits all. Eh? There are exceptions. On an essential infrastructure level, we saw that there was uh, too much uh, yeah, an, an dependency on the API gateway infrastructure. Eh? For example, if you want to bring up infrastructure uh, services that are down, uh, that 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 we had to take away the API gateway in the equation here. But uh, that means that uh, other the responsibilities are more more or less. Uh, there are other. Uh, controls put in place uh, to um, uh, to make that work and to make that uh, secure enough. Um, uh, but yeah, there is some exception here for infrastructure services. And a little bit on the underlying integration and the processes. So we have the API management. We uh, have the existing CI/CD pipeline. We had to change the identification mechanism through the uh, API key. Um, there is a classification of the exposed or, or the registered uh, APIs. Um, and we had to implement a client identity and access management being like, okay, uh, what client can access uh, what API, for example. That, that's something that's implemented on API management level. Uh, so from an integration aspect, we needed to integrate, of course, with the heart of, uh, of the security aspect. So that's the authorization or two authorization server. But next to that, we also had to yeah, connect to the vault, the enterprise, the enterprise vault, eh, for, for example, for the confidential clients, for the uh, client ID and client secrets. Eh, so both from API management as from the authorization server. 
uh, what I already explained, we had to connect to the end user identity and access management, uh, the PKI infrastructure, of course, um, and uh, last uh, our our scene. Eh? So uh, that's that's in, in that way. That's a little bit an overview that you get of the different integrations we had to make there. Uh, not only integration component wise, but we had to look into existing processes to modify them, and where new components were introduced that we had to implement new processes. Of course, uh, unfortunately, yeah, security controls always come with a kind of uh, yeah, performance penalty. We were vigilant about that. Uh, so we, we always kept uh, good monitoring on the performance and, and we, we took uh, the necessary actions, uh, of course. Um, but not to uh, not to lower the security, uh, but but uh, just to to enhance the uh, the performance. What we did there is we implemented caching at certain levels. Uh, so uh, that's something, and in that way we came to a good balance of security versus uh, performance. Uh, because yeah, there are quite a lot of a lot of uh, components uh, that that are involved a lot of checks that need to be done uh, before just getting getting your response back and, and that's why we implemented caching and that was sufficient to uh, to reach the um, yeah the, the performance that that was uh, yeah um, required from the business Okay, it's an industry in a complex and complex landscape. So that means like, okay, um, there are, well, I already explained that there are some API implementations that say, okay, we don't implement OA2 or we implement it, but we expect that you use our own STS components, et cetera. So for that reason, I already explained that we do a protocol of security conversion at API gateway can be at the front that we, that, that there is rest coming in and, and the security mechanism is OA2, but at the bank, at the back that we will implement. So API Gateway plays that conversion role. We have a specific protocol or a specific security implemented. Um, something else maybe is like, yeah, quite so, well, there are some components that say, okay, we do implement OR2, but it's only partial. That's also what we what we experienced. Uh, to give an example, uh, the um, yeah, the industry standard is evolving. As you all know, implicit grant has been deprecated. And so, okay, we had to, to deal with that. Uh, unfortunately, we were in the beginning of our uh, of our journey to, to say, okay, to see that, that the decision was taken not to implement the implicit uh, or not to, uh, um, to promote the implicit flow anymore and uh, to deprecate it really. So we could, we could adapt that, but even, um, yeah, when, when when we take the example of the of the cascading API calls, which means like in the previous slides we covered the client application towards an API one. But what if that API one needs to call an API two and the API two and then a third API and then so on? How do we handle this? Eh? So we very shortly, eh, what, what are the options that we have? Eh? We could just pass on the access token. Well, that's definitely not. A good, a good uh, approach according to the OA2 uh, standard. What could we do then? Also, the client credential grant type that we could implement. Well, that uh, is not uh, that is not chosen. Well, it's it's not the preferred one because we are losing track of the delegated user because that's the thing that or the end user that we need to do to perform our end user uh, fine grained authorization role level security. So that's also something that we. We opted not to go for. We could use uh, a, a custom, a custom implementation. Uh, well, we're not in favor of that. Uh, building things ourselves, we would rather use uh, industry standards and uh, industry standards. So we want to avoid the the, the custom built uh, solution. And at the time that we uh, that we looked into that, um, there was a draft the O2 token exchange. Um, but uh, since uh, beginning of last year, it, it became a standard. Eh? So uh, uh, we, we opted for this one. Eh? But uh, what did we see? Um, well, that our STS uh, components, so our authorization server, could not uh, implement that. So the, the support was lacking of that, of that component. So we have, we have to wait till mid 2021 to uh, yeah, implement the token exchange of our. Uh, in, inside our STS component. Um, 
Okay, so maybe to wrap up, eh, don't forget the other aspects. So I, I've been focusing on, on the uh, design and the uh, realization, but also your platform has to be ready. Eh? So for example, in our case, we had to upgrade our API gateway and our infrastructure. We had to do an upscaling. So that's something to take to take along. Also in your governance, eh, so your, your uh, processes, uh, they, they, there are definitely new security checkpoints that need to be implemented and they need to be linked to your API uh, lifecycle. And then uh, last uh, aspect is your organization, also very important eh, as in, in your approach and your architecture. We implemented uh, this, this really as an uh, as an, uh, yeah, uh, a requirement in our, in our architecture. Uh, we foresaw the guidelines, the patterns, the different patterns that are available. We just worked them out in different scenarios. And then we, um, um, we implemented a specific, a role specific training and for everybody who's involved uh, within his viewpoint in this uh, API security uh, um, yeah, uh, area. So, Basically, this is how I want to conclude uh, to uh, last but not least. Uh, we, if, you, if you want to, to shift uh, in, in your, in your uh, landscape, you have to shift in your mindset. And security by design is a really important uh, aspect uh, yeah, to take along in your journey. Okay, that was it from, from my end. Uh, thank you for your uh, attention. Thanks, Tom, for the, uh, the great presentation. Uh, we already have a couple of questions in the Q&A. For all the other people in the audience, don't hesitate to still ask your questions to the two presenters, so Tom and Peter. Uh, the first question from uh, Elena. Uh, and Peter and Tom, I'll let you fight who will answer it. Um, are there any specific techniques and approaches for securing APIs consumed by mobile applications? Yeah, well, to answer this question, uh, maybe let me start with the, the techniques that you will use uh, in your mobile application is also uh, linked to the mechanism that you use to secure your API, of course. Eh? Uh, but for reference, let's assume that uh, it is secured by OAuth 2. Um, what we see is the, the different flow that you're going to take um, is also kind of linked to the client that is using the API. So for mobile applications, it's typically linked to the authorization code client flow because the end user is also always in the picture. Um, and the techniques that you will use there is also linked on how the, uh, the front end, in this case, a mobile application, will also store in a secure way the token. Um, and there, Tom, also we had that kind of discussions uh, within the Colrad story as well. Eh? So within uh, mobile applications uh, on those devices, you can uh, shift things, uh, for example, towards a secure uh, vault to store the tokens. But the pixie mechanism is also something that is used uh, often together with that kind of vaults. Eh? Because, for example, single page applications, which are yeah, browser applications, Angular, for example, will not have the possibility for set, such faults in there. The pixel mechanisms is basically always positioned. Eh? And Tom, that's something that we also do, I think, for all front-end application and um, languages that we uh, that we see within the call route uh, scope. Eh? Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, indeed, that's true. Eh? So indeed, uh, for your, uh, your, you have to make the difference between confidential clients and uh, yeah, and, and and public clients, eh? so that then um, and public clients, the uh, the pixie comes uh, comes to the to the foreground. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then I move uh, to the next question from Simon. Um, it's about the opaque token used. Uh, so Simon wonders if it's a simple bearer token or you're just taking an GBT and encrypting it. Well, it's not an encrypted shot. Eh? It's it's really it's it's only it's a pointer. Eh? It's it's a, yeah. It's it's a better token in, in in such a way that if if you have access to that uh, to that op opaque token, you you get access to the uh, to the information basically. So you have to protect it. That's 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 for sure. Uh, but it's not an encrypted shot. It's just uh, it's just uh, in fact an. Uh, a pointer. It's a pointer to uh, to um, yeah, basically uh, an internal database of your authorization server. Uh, but it does not contain any information at all. It's just just a pointer. Nothing more than that. A reference. 
And then how is the token translation made from the opaque to the JOT? Uh, where are the user details information being retrieved or where is it stored to, to do the translation? Uh, well, where is it stored? Is it stored in, in the authorization server? Like I explained at, at uh, the previous question. Uh, it is in, in an internal database of your uh, of your authorization server that, that things like that are being stored and the pointer is is just handed over to your uh, opaque token and then when you do an inter from your API gateway when you do an introspection um, you can you can uh, yeah, verify whether okay uh, you you will you will get back the uh, the different fields that that are required okay this is uh, this is the scope. This is the, the this uh, this is the audience, uh, and you can you can validate that on, on your API gateway. Yeah? So uh, I don't know if that's an answer to the question. For me, this uh, okay. And then another question from Lorenzo. Uh, Lorenzo, sorry. If you use one token per API, what do you do when an API needs to call another one? And why are you not sending the same access token and limiting the validity of the token? Uh, when token, uh, what, what do you need to do? And I think I already explained it in my last slides. I don't know, maybe this question was before that I uh, uh, came to that section. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's in fact the token exchange that we that we want to to, uh, to implement. Eh? So uh, that's from one API to another API. Unless uh, yes, yes, yes. I think that's that's the answer here. Why not sending the same access token? Well, that's why not sending the same access token. So that was the the first alternative that we looked into. Uh, that's definitely not not a good way of of, of doing that because. Yeah, you you have to. Well, it depends. Eh? Like like if if you say okay, we we've chosen for one API, uh, one one uh, one token per API. Um, but if you do that, yeah, you cannot send it to another API because that API is just linked to the audience of of your of your uh, API that that you're uh, you're calling. So you can you cannot change that. Eh? You cannot change your uh, your audience because only the authorization server can do that. He has the right to to sign and uh, to sign a token. So basically, that's uh, and and just trusting on okay, or we will ignore doing the audience check. Yeah, that's definitely not uh, not uh, yeah applying the security mechanisms that are uh, at the basis of uh, to um, 